I wonder a little bit, I'm curious, and I'm not going to put you on the spot, but I wonder if you've thought in a while of the freedom that you have experienced from God. There's an area of your life where you've experienced the power of God walking you out of where you were into a place where there's greater freedom, where there's forgiveness. Um, I don't know what, uh, of course, I don't know what pocket of your life you maybe have experienced that in, or maybe you feel like you haven't. Maybe you're waiting for that. Or perhaps right now you're in the midst of a new kind of storm, a new type of challenge, and I just want you to know God's giving you an invitation. He's, ta- he's, he's offering his hand to walk you through the deep. Um, and, and really, the deep can be something very, very significant. It can also just be a challenge. This morning, um, I was like, why aren't you asking people to pray for you about a challenge you have? I, I have a challenge I've been facing for months and months and months. I wasn't planning to talk to you about this. <laughs> um, but I, I need prayer support. God's called me to create um, a class uh, for people who are interested in pursuing ministry um, on organizational health and leadership, and it's really hard, mostly because I have to videotape it. There's no live like interaction with students, and technologically, I feel like I'm struggling with it. Content motivation. I just don't like just talking to a screen. I much prefer all of you. <laughs> this is way more fun. This is my style. So it's like, it's, it's um, you know, there are much, much bigger challenges in life. I'm not suggesting that mine is just whatever. But listen, God cares about whatever it is that we're facing, and he invites us in community to pray for each other around the things that we're challenged by, that we're struggling with. So I do want to ask you to pray for me I don't know what it is that I need, but God does <laughs> all kinds of things. There's probably a long list. So I'm just going to invite you to do that. And I want to encourage us to invite each other into our worlds like that, small or big things, um, and ask people. In fact, I want to challenge you. Uh, those of you who are here in person today, would you find one person today before you leave? And if you get home and you realize, oh, shoot, I forgot Go ahead and text somebody. That's fine. But if you can, today while we're here, ask somebody, hey, and they don't have to pray for you right now. They could. They don't have to. But hey, would you, would you pray for me about this thing? Um, it could be a physical struggle. It could be a relational situation. It doesn't even have to be a struggle. It could be an opportunity. But ask somebody, hey, would you pray for me about this this week? Okay, can we do that? Let's take that challenge. We want to keep growing deeper in our support for one another and, uh, and as prayers, um, asking God to bring that deliverance. So why don't we pray right now as we begin our time of message. Jesus, uh, you know what we need. Um, we desire to be the branches um, on the vine. And so reconnect us, God, right now, um, as you've been doing, calling us, taking our hand. Um, but but cause us to be connected to you, Jesus, so that in the next 30 minutes, we can hear from you. God, we ask boldly that not one person who's gathered with us in person or online would miss the, the nugget of goodness that you want to share, the treasure, God, that you, um, that you have for us. Lord, we need you. <laughs> that area of our lives that we might have been just thinking about, God, we need you in that. We, um, we need your help. We need your wisdom. We need clarity. Maybe we need uh, strength or energy. We, maybe we need a new heart. Create in us a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within us like David prayed. So use this time for your kingdom's cause. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right. Well, that wasn't in the script. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That was supposed to be funny. That obviously wasn't funny. It wasn't what I was planning to talk about, uh, but maybe that's what we were supposed to talk about. So um, so yesterday, talking about unexpected things, I, I went to a funeral yesterday um, of someone I didn't know. So that, that's interesting. Um, I was invited to this funeral by a coworker, and I will say I have a deep appreciation for funerals. Um, Dan would tell you for 
decades now, uh, I just feel a pull toward going to funerals. Um, you know, they talk about wedding crashers. I kind of will say I felt a little bit like a funeral crasher yesterday. I didn't know anyone except for my coworker. And, um, and yet, I was so blessed to be there. I, I think attending someone's funeral or celebration of life, it just really provides an opportunity to learn so very much. I mean, I think if the funeral is what God calls it to be, okay? Um, it's a really great opportunity to learn so much about what came before death for, for a person. You know, you get to hear some stories. You might hear some of the things that they're remembered by. And you, you, you can learn a lot about a person um, at their funeral. So uh, also for many, death is a time when you wish so badly that you could just go back. I mean, if I just had one more day or if I could just have 10 more minutes, even for an insignificant moment that you had with that person, that you could just spend that time together with them. And um, I felt that way. I felt that way. Um, if you could just have that moment back, what would I have done? Maybe I could have paid closer attention to what he said. Maybe I would have listened more closely. Maybe I would have put my phone down and looked at them in the eye. Um, I would have experienced that moment with greater attentiveness. Well, the story in the Bible that we're looking closely at today provides us that opportunity. And I hope that we lean in here as we spend some time with God's word and expect that this is a moment where we get to look in the eyes of God through his word and hear something with greater attentiveness than we ever have before. I believe that God wants to do that. So this story in the Bible that we're looking at closely provides us that opportunity. Now the context of this is that Jesus is spending time with his disciples not long before he's going to leave the earth. He knows that death is knocking at the door. And so you would imagine that he, well, Jesus always was very attentive to the words that he was using, but particularly in this time, you can imagine that with his disciples in this sort of holy moment before he knows that he's going to be no longer with them, he has some pretty important things to say. He's talking with them, but the disciples, they don't have this benefit of knowing, particularly in this conversation, the promise that's, that's going to come at the end of the talk that Jesus is giving them. It's in verse 11 of John chapter 15. We're going to narrow in on that verse and obviously look at the context around it. We, get, we have the benefit of the promise at the end of this part of the story, but, um, but Jesus' disciples don't. Even more, they don't even know that they're spending some of the last precious moments with Jesus before he's going to be taken and beaten and hung on a cross and killed. Even, even though Jesus had told them, he'd given them all kinds of indications that the time was coming soon, their time was coming to an end, but they didn't get it. But we do. We know that it's coming soon. So the, the disciples also, like I said, can't benefit from knowing the promise that Jesus is about to tell them. And what he's going to share is an announcement of sorts. Okay? It's like this amazing treasure. So they're going on a treasure hunt. I want to invite you to go on a treasure hunt with me today. It reminds me of a movie called Goonies. Okay, <laughs> now this dates me a little bit, although I don't know. Hopefully uh, a younger generation has seen Goonies. Goonies, we won't say what date it, it was made. Uh, Goonies is about a group of boys, if I remember right. It has been a while since I've seen this movie. I had to Google the summary of it a little bit. Okay, these group of boys in uh, the state of Oregon. Anybody know the town? I mean, how, random facts. Anybody know what town the Goonies live in? Goondocks. I did not remember that. <laughs> so they call themselves the Goonies, this group of young boys who, um, who, whose families actually have a major problem. They're possibly going to lose the land that they live on. Um, and, uh, and they find this treasure map in the attic of one of the boys' homes. And, um, and they see this treasure map and X marks the spot of the treasure that they're supposed to, I mean, that they just decide we got to go for it. You know, maybe this can even save our community. If we can find the treasure, I think it's One-Eyed Willie. Does that ring a bell? Okay, his treasure, One-Eyed Willie's treasure. Okay, 
So these boys set out on this treasure quest, this treasure hunt. And like all good treasure hunt stories, um, they persist in this treasure hunt through highs and lows, challenges, difficulties. There's, um, that, you know, they risk life and limb, persisting in the difficult, challenging, scary moments, going up a very, against a very real opponent, if you remember Mama Somebody and her son. Uh, they, um, they're struggling, but they are in hot pursuit of the X that marks the spot, where the treasure could be. And so they go on this adventure, and there is, by the way, where X marks the spot. Sorry, um, this is a, all of a sudden I forgot the word. Spoiler alert, before there were even spoiler alerts, I'm giving it to you. Uh, there is treasure, and it's treasure overflowing, okay? It's treasure to the full. That's what the story is about. Turn with me to John chapter 15, if you would. And we are going to jump to the end. We've been spending some time in this series called Growing Healthy. We've been in John chapter 15. Verse 11, though, is where X marks the spot on the treasure hunt, okay? And here's the treasure, verse 11. These things I've spoken to you, Jesus says, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. The treasure is the joy. It's not skimpy. Jesus says, it's going to be full, okay? I get a little excited about this. So this treasure that Jesus shows them on the map, uh, and we've got some kind of screens that hopefully will be helpful for you as we think about it. So here we go. John 15, 11. I'm going to say it again. Jesus said, these things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. Here at X marks the spot this is the treasure. Now let's, let's learn a little bit more about it. Let's go to the next screen. I want to see what I have there next. I, sorry, I forgot. Yeah, if you think about that word joy, that's the treasure. Okay? Joy. Now, we have a question before us. Is it just at the X marks the spot? I'm going to spoiler alert for you on the message. It's not just, it's not just at the end. It's in the journey. If you watch Goonies, you know that there's a lot more gained in this quest of these young, young people than just, uh, than just the joy at the end, just the treasure that's overflowing at the end. The treasure comes through the journey, right? The relationships that grow, the adventure that they experience, the, the things that they learn about themselves. There is, there is joy, not just where X marks the spot, but in the journey. Now, what's the treasure? Let's talk about joy a little bit. I want to tell you about my friend, Bethany. My good friend, Bethany, she lives in Columbus, Ohio. I have met her through work, actually. She's a follower of Jesus. Actually, it was really cool. There was a, a moment in a meeting that I was in with her, and she said something. So I had been meeting, I don't know how many meetings I'd had with her, for months probably, but there's something about Bethany, and I was like, gosh, I wonder if she's a follower of Jesus. And then one day, she says something about um, her and her husband working with their youth group, and I was like, yeah, I knew it. I saw it. And uh, so almost immediately after the meeting, hopefully she'll watch this later, I write her. I was just like, I knew it. I knew you were a follower of Jesus. And um, since that email, little exchange, I mean, I'm telling you, this friend has brought tears to my eyes over the support and the encouragement, but it's her joy that's so contagious. Like, I just need to spend more time with her, so hopefully it'll, like, kind of rub off on me, you know? <laughs> like, when I have an opportunity to meet with Bethany, I know that I will be encouraged, whether it's in a group with people where we're not talking about Jesus, or she and I are exchanging texts or emails or praying for each other. Man, I tell you what, she has prayed for Oasis Church. And she is passionate about um, sharing joy. Why? Is it something she intends to do? I don't, I don't think so. I know she's intentional about it, but I will tell you she's a branch that's connected to the vine. Let's keep going back to this picture. She's, she's just a branch connected to the vine. The vine is the one who, as, and she is the conduit, who helps breathe life and have experienced joy with the people around her. Let me tell you about the, man's, the man that I went, uh, the funeral they went to the, uh, the gentleman. His name is Pastor Bill Rundles. Pastor Bill um, has been a pastor here in the Cedar Rapids area 
In fact, uh, Pastor Bill led the church Believers in Grace in Marion. Um, It was a church plant that was born out of he and his wife's living room. And um, I'll tell you what, I learned so much yesterday because uh, I, I was privileged to hear testimonies, particularly of, its, of his children and his grandchildren. He was only 62 years old. Um, but tell of Pastor Bill's love, love for them. His wife came up front and she shared, you know, uh, Bill loved, you know, she, she talked to the people there of the church, of the family. He loved you. She said that he loved me, but that paled in comparison to the love that he had for Jesus. And then for two hours, we were blessed to hear story after story of how Pastor Bill was used by God through the highs and lows of life to help and inspire people to know, love, and follow Jesus. And uh, you, could, you could see that in the hearts and the lives of people who are grieving and hurting, that they were connected to Jesus through Pastor Bill. He had a joy about him, that even in the midst of challenge, one of his adult sons talked about how, uh, how he, you know, got criticism. As a leader, sometimes that happens. And, and how this son would just say, Dad, these people are, you know, why do you, why do you, why do you put up with this? And his dad would say, I love these people. I mean, there's a, there's a joy that runs deeper than, hey, I think I'm going to think positively today, or I'm going to persist in the midst of some challenges. No, it's like, I'm going to have joy. That's, those are two pictures, both Bethany and Pastor Bill, of people who experienced joy in the treasure hunt and found the, the full joy in the treasure where X marks the spot. Can you think of somebody in your life who has joy in the Lord? I think about Jesus, like, wouldn't it have been awesome to walk with uh, his disciples and see firsthand as he walked the earth, his joy. Some of you like the the show, The Chosen. And I found this picture of uh, the guy who plays Jesus in The Chosen. And I think, man, that is a picture of joy. Jesus, now this is just a person, okay, but it helps me kind of think about Jesus. Jesus had a joy like nobody else's joy. From the beginning of time in relationship with God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, he's the inventor of joy. My friends, Christ followers, we ought to be, we ought to be exuding a joy. Why? Because we figured out how to do that ourselves? No, but because we're branches who are connected to the vine, who's connected to the root, who is Jesus, the inventor of joy. So where you're not experiencing that, joy even in the midst of challenge we need to ask God to bring us freedom like that song uh, of Egypt talks about the word joy in the original language in this passage is used um, uh, it's it's root is a verb it is the, the the meaning of that root word which is a verb means to rejoice or to be well or to thrive like yes please Growing Healthy is our series, and joy, rejoice, the verb uh, that comes at the, the, the root of that is about health. It's about being, it's about thriving. And so what, what does joy look like? It's to thrive. It's to experience health. Again, I just keep thinking about being connected to the vine and the branches, It works well with what Jesus was saying about the vine and the branches, that it doesn't wither, that it doesn't sort of, uh, you know, kind of fall off, or when it does, thank goodness for the great physician who reconnects us. And it's not just a little joy. Jesus says that that your joy may be full. Picture something that's full. Again, John 15, 11, these things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and your joy may be meek, little, every once in a while. Full, that it might be full. I think about something almost over, overflowing. We talked about this word fill before, not the name of the guy, F-I-L-L, 
We've talked about this before on Sunday mornings. I rem remember my analogy of Milt Westendorf's DX and my dad pulling up to this full service, sorry, I had to go there, full service station, and he would say, fill her up. And they would fill up the car, fill her up. Yeah, it's about joy being full. In fact, four out of five times where joy is used in the book of John, the words that come with it are full, okay? They are full. It's not just joy a little bit. It's full. Jesus uses that word that I want you to have joy. May it be joy to the full. And so like with a treasure map, as you dream of what the treasure will be like, you picture that room that's filled with treasure. It's full. It's a treasury of full joy. No room for empty space. All right, no spot remaining to be filled. It's, it's full. Okay, well, knowing now that this conversation between Jesus and his disciples is one of the last ones, we want to re rewind, right? Do you have a favorite movie that you've watched and, um, and you finally, you get, you've watched it for the first time, finally you get to the end and it's like, yes, that's exactly what I was hoping would happen, right? And then you think, man, it'd be kind of fun to watch that movie again and sort of not have the angst of all of the conflict that comes before that moment and be able to like enjoy it because I know it's going to be okay. It's all going to work out. Actually, the latest Spider-Man movie was like that for me um, because uh, I don't want to waste this opportunity. Every time I think, oh, I'm going to talk about this movie, Tara, who, as you know, is a, she loves movies. I don't want to miss it. Okay, so this last Spider-Man movie, I don't want to do a spoiler, okay, but I will say that after watching it, I was like, you know, it'd be really fun to go back and watch all the other movies that come before it. Uh, raise your hand if you've seen that movie. Okay, well, anyway, you might enjoy it. <laughs> There's quite a few people in here who haven't yet, so I'm working hard not to spoil it. But I was propelled. Like, I was like, I want to see what the other Spider-Man movies were like. Why not? So um, anyway, it's kind of like that. Let's go back in this conversation Jesus is having with his disciples. See what happens, okay? Because if we want to know the treasure and enjoy it all the more, let's make sure we get the journey. So John 15, verse 1, I am the true vine, Jesus says. Now, if you've heard this a few weeks because you've been a part of this series, keep listening. There's more here. There's greater treasure, okay, to be found. I am the true vine. I'm stopping right there. Did you know this? I don't know if any of you, I know there's at least one French speaker in the room. Anybody know French, by the way, besides the one person I know? Okay, look at this. Check this out. Did you know, and we can go to the next slide, that in French, I am, in French, is, oh, oh, je suis. I got it right. Je suis. Isn't that kind of interesting? By the way, Jesus has a lot of I am statements throughout John. I am, we'll get to those, but I am the true vine. I am in French is je suis. Do you see anything interesting about that? All right, take a look at the next screen here. Hmm, what do you think? All right, let's go to the next one. I am is Jesus. By the way, this goes all the way back to Exodus where um, Moses is met by God. And let's keep this up on the screen. Moses is met by God um, at the burning bush and Moses says, who should I tell people you, your name is? Who, who are you? I am. <laughs> Just tell them I am is who I am, God says. Jesus is, and by the way, um, the, the Jewish understanding would have understood this, okay? So when Jesus was saying, I am, he was connecting himself with God himself. He wasn't just a prophet, just a nice guy who knew a lot, was sent by Jesus, a messenger. He is God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the triune God. I am is Jesus. And I know that's just kind of a random thought, but man, that's kind of cool, huh? About the French language, je suis, all right? I am. By the way, when we say, I am a child of God, Jesus is the one who precedes our identity. Isn't that beautiful? I am Jody. Jesus is my, uh, the one who frames up my identity. Okay, let's keep going, just because we should. All right, the, um, there are three things in John. Let's talk context, right, of, um, of this talk, this really important treasure talk that Jesus is having with them. There's some things that precede that that are really worth noting. Another I am statement by the way, uh, well, actually, we'll get to that in a second. Let's rewind to John 13 because Jesus tells them something that's really important. And again, I've told you these things so that you might have joy. 
okay? That you're joy, that it would be joy to the full. I've told you this. What are the things that he's telling them? John 13, 34 through 35 is on the path toward the treasure hunt. This is what the verses say, and they're powerful. Jesus says, you want to know joy, do the things I command. He says, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. And also you're to love one another. Did I just say that twice? A new commandment I give you, Jesus says, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also, just like that, you're to love one another. It's pretty important if you want to experience the treasure of joy to do these things that I've commanded. And part of that is loving each other. I really appreciated Pastor Mark uh, Vanderteig last week being here, challenging us to love one another and um, to, to know the love of God and then to share that love of God with others. That's part of how we'll experience joy and joy to the full, this new commandment. Then another thing that Jesus says, and I, can't, I don't have enough time to share all of it from John, but another key part that we might want to think about when we think about the things that he said that we should remember, the things that he's told us so that we can have joy, is, uh, oh, I missed 35. Verse 35 in John 13, by this, the way that we love each other, by this all people will know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another, the world is looking to see how we love one another. There are people in our lives who have a need to be connected to Oasis Church, frankly. They have a need to be connected in the body of Christ. They're probably watching to see how we love one another. Do they really want to be a part of a place where people don't love each other well? No, I mean, they've got plenty of other opportunities for that in the rest of their lives. How is it? That we, follow this, that we follow this commandment that Jesus gives us because it's connected to, on the treasure hunt to having joy and joy to the full. All right, Jesus also says another I am statement in John. John chapter 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. By the way, this is a social media post that went out from Oasis Church this week, and um, it has gotten a lot of traction. People need and love to be reminded of the truth that Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. By the way, as of last night, we've gotten 190 reactions to this post and it's had 28 shares. Glory to God. Jesus says, I'm the way and the truth and the life. Remember on the treasure hunt, he says, hey, remember these things, do these things that your joy may be full. All right, let's keep going in John 15:1. I'm the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. I'm going fast because we've covered this in past weeks, so if you're able to, go back. If you've missed any of those Sundays, go back on our YouTube page. You can watch the sermons. Um, you can do that on our Facebook page as well. Verse 2, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. Oh, we talked about that week one. It can be painful, but good for us brings health, that it may bear more fruit. Already, he says to his disciples, you're clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. I've been pruning you. You've been walking the walk on the treasure hunt. Verse 4, abide in me and I in you be connected. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Can I just say that I know I was talking about funerals for a second. Funerals can be done in a really wrong way, too. Um, if the message at a funeral is, and he was just a really good guy, what a great guy, what a great gal. Um, you can really build a person up in a funeral in a way that's actually not helpful. Uh, one, nobody's perfect except Jesus. Right, so there's not a funeral that can be had, period, because Jesus went, you know, overcame death even. So there's not a funeral where it's not applicable to say that uh, they weren't perfect. And sometimes in the midst of memories, we just bring up all the good stuff. But generally, when there's people gathered, they all know there's, they weren't perfect. Um, 
And people can get the wrong message. They can get a message, actually, that, like, I need to be perfect like that person was. One of the things that was beautiful about yesterday's funeral was, was being able to say, hearing people say, he wasn't perfect, he knew Jesus. He was a sinner in need of a savior. By the way, that's being connected to the vine. And what a load off, huh? Because when you mess up at work or at home or with friends, <laughs> we're not expected to be perfect. We want to abide. We want to remain in the vine. But we also don't need the pressure because we can't live up to it of having it all together. All right, where was I? Verse 5, let's see. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me, make your home in me. And my words abide in you. The things that I've experienced, you've experienced through me. Ask whatever you wish. Remember this from two weeks ago. It's not like genie in the bottle. But, but when we're connected, we're, we're going to be asking the things that line up with Jesus in his heart. Verse 8, by this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. And so prove, the fruit proves that we're connected to the vine. Prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you, the ones that we've been talking about in morning, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you. This is the treasure. Well, all of it is really. These things that I have spoken to you, I've spoken them to you that, your, that my joy, Jesus says, may be in you and that your joy may be full. Now let's also be cautious about falling into a consumer mentality here. Where I want the end result, which is joy. So what do I got to do? What's the price I got to pay? All right, I can just give you my card, right? What, what's the price that I need to pay in order to have that treasure? And there's this consumer mentality that we have. Um, I might mess with you a little bit here on this. I think about kids and about Christmas. Minute. <laughs> I told you I'm going to mess with you. Okay. Um, it makes me think, think about kids and their behavior as Christmas approaches. Isn't it miraculous how behavior can change when we know it might result in us getting some kind of treasure? So we ask kids, have you been a naughty or nice boy or girl? Okay? And so then, because we want what the treasure is, we say, well, I've been nice. I've been nice. In fact, um, especially during this time when there might even be elves watching, I'm going to be extra nice, okay? And I'm actually going to hide the stuff as much as possible, hide the stuff that I haven't been nice about so that hopefully I'll get that treasure. Pick me, pick me. I've been a nice girl. I don't know that it's all that different for us as adults. But what happens then is that kids feel like they have to answer that I've been nice, hide the rest of the stuff, but yet they really do know what's in their heart. They know what they've hidden away. They know that they haven't told anybody about the time they pulled their sister's hair or lied to their parent and got away with it. I actually wonder if we kind of <laughs> are doing a little bit to help our kids be savvy on truth tellers as an end result. We just want to look like our behavior is a little bit better than it is, but the child, like each of us, knows that we have failed to live up to the expectation of perfection. It's a sad place to be. It's gotten us in a world of hurt and trouble because we feel like we shouldn't share about our sin with anybody, lest they know. So they ask how we are, and we say, I'm fine. How are you doing? I'm, I'm good. Things are going well. And we hide away the sin, and, it, and we feel alone. And again, we're invited into freedom. It's not if you do this, you'll have joy. I'll get joy by working hard enough. If I can just remain in Jesus, oh, I'm going to work really hard at that. Jesus says, just keep coming back. Let me do the hard work. Connect me, allow me to connect with you. 
All right, because the price, by the way, what's the price of the treasure? There's no price to be paid. It's been paid in full in Jesus. The X of the cross marks the spot where the treasure is found. We have a a picture, I think, of a crumpled map here. Okay, you've seen it before. The X, where the X marks the spot, the the price has been paid in full. We have a private school in town that has a logo that looks like this. Let's go to, there's our X, go to the next one. It looks like this. If you've seen it, probably on the backs of vehicles. I feel like I've seen a lot of those. I love this logo. I love the image. I don't know the whole story. And by the way, this isn't their logo. Their logo is better than this. Uh, this I had to try to figure out how to make. Um, it's also got a, a, a circle around it. I don't know the story behind that image. Um, but it's a cross. And to me, it looks like an empty grave. I want to remember that the X, where the treasure is in full, is joy in Jesus And now we're invited to experience that joy in Jesus. You can go to the next slide. By the cross, by way of the cross, by way, by the way, of an empty cross. I did just say, by the way, by the way, twice. It's by way of the empty cross that we experience the treasure. That's where X marks the spot, my friends. Now, this is a promise from Jesus that's joy in the journey of the treasure hunt. Say joy in the journey joy in the journey of the treasure hunt, and it's also found where X marks the spot. It's not just joy in heaven, okay? Jesus invites us into a relationship with him now where there is joy in the journey. It starts now, and it lasts forever. Do you want that? He invites you then to abide in him. Remain in him. Allow him to be the joy bringer. These things I have spoken to you, Jesus says, that my joy may be in you and your joy may be full. We're wrapping up this series, Growing Healthy. It's this picture of health that Jesus invites us into to grow in him. Where there's unhealth, let's ask for healing and freedom. Even uh, Jesus had joy on his way to the cross. It's not when life gets easy It's now, whatever the challenge is, he invites us to experience joy by connecting and abiding with us. He will give us that gift of joy. He wants to continue to grow us healthy. Let's pray. Jesus, uh, thank you for the invitation to grow healthy in you. This treasure hunt that you've invited us into, help us jump right in with both feet. (laughs) We need your help in doing that. Thank you for what you're doing In us individually, as families, as Oasis Church, in this community, we want to experience more of your health, God, more of your joy. You are the joy bringer, so we come to you for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.